Hey, welcome to the channel where I talk about deep learning papers, NLP papers. And today our topic is Game Bird, Generative Adversarial Learning for Robust Text Classification. It's a way to use a semi-supervised bird in NLP domain to gain a very high level of data efficiency. So why is this paper special? This paper introduced the semi-supervised scan in NLP. It's one of the first uh, papers they talk about use the, the leverage of the semi-supervised scan in NLP. And it fine-tuned BER model with unlabeled data because labeled data is very expensive, but we somehow have a lot of unlabeled data. If you can leverage that, then your BER model will be more, even more powerful. And you can achieve the very uh, reasonable perform performance under a very low resource environment like this. They can have the decent performance when only seeing 50 examples. If you are familiar with NLP, 50 examples are very, very little data. And this graph better illustri illustrates their uh, power. So basically, uh, they compare their model game bird with a uh, 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 standard bird. And as you can see, if they only train the 1% of the data, then their model basically can achieve over 60% of the accuracy, while a bird, bird model only have 1%, uh, only have 20% of the accuracy, basically it's not converged yet. And when you boost the, the, your, your training data to 2%, their model achieves 80% accuracy which is very high and the bird still not converge. So you can see how data efficient this model is. And this, this paper is a drawn work from University of Rome and Amazon. If you would like to receive more deep learning explaining videos like this, don't forget to subscribe. So while it's a semi-supervised scans, it's still uh, the structure is still a little bit similar to traditional games. So basically, you will still have the generator and the discriminator. And in this case, you will have the real data from your la label from your training data. And it labels the, which class this data point belongs to. And you also have the fake data that generated by the generator. And uh, your discriminator will need to classify if this data is real or is fake. If it's real, it also needs to classify like classify which class it belongs to. So basically is is real or is not is it real? And if it's real then which class is to is that? You don't have you don't have to build a hierarchical classification. You can just formulize it as a traditional classification task. If you have uh, five five different labels um, in your task, then you have uh, five plus one total classes because you have one plus class that's for the fake class. So if you have k classes, you you have uh, traditional k classes labels here. Then you have uh, the k plus one class for the fake class. And this graph uh, illustrated uh, this better. You have uh, the k classes. There's a real classes. Then you have the k plus one class. That's for fake class. Then your your discriminator will just uh, do the classifications. Classification they have k plus one classes. All right, let's take a closer look to the discriminator loss function. There are two different parts of discriminator loss function. One part, the first part is supervised turn. Supervised loss turn is to calculate the the the, the penalty of you classifying the, the the real label example. So basically you need to, if this is example is a real, then you need to correctly classify it to its corresponding class. So you want to maximize the log probability of given the condition X uh, to get the corresponding class. So your your class only can be one, two, three, four, blah, 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 two k. You need to classify this real example correctly. 
This is for label data. And another term is for unlabeled real examples. Unlabeled data, but it's real. And, uh, and also for un unlabeled fake data. Fake data will not have label as well. So as you can see, this term, this term is for the real example, real unlabeled example. If you classify the real unlabeled example to k plus one class, which is a fake class, which means if this example is real, then you say it's fake, then you got penalized. You got penalized. So you want to minimize this probability, this kind of probability of classifying the real unlabeled data to a fake class. And second term is uh, easier to understand. If this is a fake example, you want to correctly classify this as a fake example. So you want to maximize the log probability of this uh, fake example of being the fake class. Because it's a loss function, so there's a minus turn here, uh, minus sign here. So you want to maximize this, this value, log probability, which means uh, minimize the loss function because you times the minus one. And the real loss is just combined. This is supervised loss term and unsupervised loss term. As for the generator, it's even more interesting. It takes, the generator takes the input because the, your generator wants to, the goal for generator is to generate the hidden representation that's very similar to the real hidden representation. And how we get a real hidden representation is very simple. We have like one Burr model, then we have the input example, label input, and for a given input, the Burr model will generate a hidden representation for that example. And the generator basically wants to mimic that. And the generator will have 100 dimensional noise vector that is randomly generated. Then after uh, this generated neural network, you will have a fake uh, hidden representation of this uh, fake data. And the loss function is trying to encourage this uh, fake hidden representation. This is a real hidden representation. This is a fake hidden representation. It basically wants to the, the fake hidden representation as close as similar to the real hidden representation as possible. So we have the uh, loss function is like this. You subtract the real one to the fake one. If they are very similar, their subtraction uh, result will be nearly zero. Then that's when you succeed. And also, this is one turn of the, the generator function. And if the generator generated a like fake example and it's detected by the discriminator, it will also be penalized like this example. If you the generator generated one example is a fake example and the discriminator successfully classify, classify this fake example as a fake class, then your loss function will be written like this. You you don't want this to happen, so you want to minimize this uh, the probability of fake example being detected by the discriminator because you want to minimize that. So in the loss, loss function, you, you, you have the negative sign here. And uh, the, 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 the real loss function, just to, to sum, sum up these two terms, the feature matching term and the unsupervised term. And this is the whole architecture of it. Basically, uh, the discriminator it's just a multi-layer perception. It takes the intermediate uh, representation, or you can say hidden representation from from Burr. You have real is it real data, then go through the Burr model encoder, text encoding. Basically, you can say there's a text encoder. Then you have the 768 dimensional hidden representation of that given example. Then feed it to the discriminator. Discriminator need to classify. Uh, which class it belongs to, and also discriminator takes the 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 output from from the generator as input. Generator also generate the fake hidden representation. This as they try to mimic the the birth hidden represent representation, 
the hidden hidden representation generated by Burr. So a uh, discriminator will take these kind of two different types of input, but same shape of tensor, same shape of uh, vector, then classify it. Uh, is it real or is it fake? And if it's real, you need to classify which class it belongs to. So it's a you can see this this part, uh, the Burr model and the, the discriminator as a multi multi layer perception on top of Burr. And in the inference time, they just uh, completely discard the generator. So it just runs like a uh, normal Burr. Uh, no more bird plus one classification layer. So as so I say, the generator takes the 100 dimensional uh, vector, normalized from the value of the vector, each for each dimension is zero to one. And it's also, the generator is also just a, a multi-layer perceptron and generated the 768 dimensional output, try to mimic the hidden representation is generated by the Burr model. And that's just, I just have one question here, actually. Uh, I feel a little bit concerning here. When, when you do the inference, you discarded the, the generator, right? Then what if your model, what if it is a real uh, label data, then your real example, then your model classified this as a, a fake uh, class k plus one class will this how much will this affect the performance but i guess it's not that much because you know their experiment results they say they still outperform the standard bird model quite by quite a significant margin so it's not really a problem yeah so just link on on label real examples a little bit you may wonder how do we calculate the loads for unlabeled real example because we don't really have label for that so the discriminator will do one thing it would predict the, if this example is a real or fake. But when it predict the unlabeled real example is a real one, then you also make a prediction which class it belongs to. Let's say the discriminator, say it's class number one. But how can we calculate the loss? We don't have the label for that. So that's a little bit tricky for that. They don't actually calculate the loss when the unlabeled real examples is classified uh, correctly. They only calculate the, the, the loss function when it misclassified as a, a fake class. And the reason is simple because we cannot calculate when it classified correctly. We don't have label for that. So as you can see in the loss unsupervised loss term, if the discriminator classify the real example, the real unlabeled example as a fake one, then the loss function they will they will be penalized. They will be penalized. So they want the loss function. The model wants to minimize these things from uh, minimize the probability this happen. So the you want to uh, lower the probability of uh, misclassify uh, the unlabeled rare example, and you only calculate in this part. Yeah. So let's look at the experiment results. They run the the comparison on six different data sets. The first data set is 20 news group. They have news articles and they have 20 different classes assigned to those articles. And as you can see, if you only change 1% of the data, then the model performance outperform the baseline Burr model by quite a lot. And this gap is only got uh, smaller when you use 30% of the data. So you can see the data efficiency of the gamber is extremely high. It's really, really high. And like this, this, this case, it's a question classification. You have the two category. One is a course grant. Uh, you have fewer number of classes, more course grant classes, classes. And you have five grant classes. And you can see the similar result. The, only when you train on the one or two percent of data, then the game bird outperform the baseline bird quite a lot. And in this course grant, uh, only the game the gap only got smaller when you use twenty percent of the data. But in this case, uh, even when you use the fifty percent of the data, the game bird still 
outperformed the baseline bar by quite a lot. And they suspect it's because of the fine grain classification. When you have more classes, then the complexity of a task is even higher. So that's when the game bird uh, will be more uh, beneficial from, from, from the, uh, the game methodology. It's more just uh, when a you can argue like when a task is more complex, you need a better model architecture to gain the, the better uh, data efficiency. Definitely when you fit infinity amount of data, this problem will be solved. But the reality is we all always don't have that much data to train your model. So that's why we want to figure out what's the, the better way to structure our model so that it will be more uh, data efficient. And then they also run uh, the comparisons on the sentiment classification task, SST5. And same similar trend, when the data are very limited, they, the baseline uh, bird just uh, underperform the game bird. And one thing worth noting is um, they use, how, how, how they obtain the um, unlabeled data, they basically, when they used one, they say when they use one percent of data, they use the rate of ninety nine percent of the data, unused data as unlabeled data. That's how they how they use that. But in the real world, they definitely it's easy to get the unlabeled data. We are not constrained in that given data set. And they also run this on the pairwise sentence classification. Is uh, Basically, you have two sentences, sentence one and sentence two, and you need to classify if these two sentences are maybe relevant or not, um, etc. And you can see that on these three different tasks, the, the game bird doesn't really have a, that strong advantage when he only uses a very limited data, let's say 1%, 2%. But still, the advantage is still consistently outperform the baseline bird model. Uh, even when you use more data, even when you use 10% of data. So the data efficiency still uh, very superior. And the takeaways for today is the Gamber uh, model is very data efficient. It does a very good job in the low resource setting. It's really good for industrial use cases because like I always emphasize, we don't really have that many label data in the world, in this world, real world. Most of data are unlabeled. Most of data sets are unlabeled. So if we can find a way to leverage those unlabeled data, we will have much uh, better uh, realistic performance. And also the good thing of that uh, is it doesn't have any additional costs in inference. It's good because even we have a web generator, but we, when we do the inference, we just uh, discard that completely. All right, congratulations. We have reached the end of today's video. And if you would like to receive more deep learning videos like this in the future, don't forget to subscribe. And other than that, have a nice day. And I will see you next time.